Hits and Crits. What's up, Hits and Crits family? Welcome back to another beginner's guide video. Uh, actually, a video we did not plan to do in the first place, but like uh, the, the, the last thing we did was uh, deployment in terrain. And uh, a lot of you uh, guys on the Discord and on YouTube and uh, everywhere else were basically asking for a little bit more deep dive, a little bit you know more detail on why certain terrain pieces, what what it, you know, what are they there for? Are they beneficial to certain you know whatever game modes? What is like of of those two veterans? What would they do with certain terrain pieces? So now we will dig deeper deeper into uh, such terrain pieces so great to have you both again um yeah what do you think like we're really quick with this one um and it was your idea to basically deliver right away uh client feedback and we deliver yeah so um so this one will be a short one but a deeper one on the terrain pieces um if you need this like in epic length and in all detail and in like hours and hours of discussing what a Warwood tree does. Um, there is a, a turning ground um, a video from, from, from Mickey, from, from uh, Song of Ice and Fire stats, which uh, is a little old, but still beneficial and still good to watch. Um, but um, yeah, don't be, don't be shy to, to drop your comments down below if you think we should do it. If we should, like after this video, you have still are under the, under the impression we should do more than just just hit us up, right? Just do a comment and say, yeah, let's go, let, let's do it, right? So you too, you can, you know, take over, say a little bit uh, before we start and um, off we go. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Thanks for having us again. Um, sure. As you said, we wanted to just um, give a reaction and react to the, to the feedback that we got and we're really, um, yeah, um, eager to, to somehow give an answer to. So we thought we'd just go over the terrain pieces, give a small overview. It's just some little hints and notes. It's not, as you said, in depth. And um, yeah, we thought about um, doing it in like two parts. The first part covers the non-destructible terrain because there is terrain that is non-destructible and there's terrain which is typically formed linear that you can destroy. Mm -hmm. And um, that would be our our system to to go through the video real quick and we will just give yeah some some little hints some little uh, sneaky uh, tricks and mm -hmm. general um general ratings or assessments of, of the terrain piece as such because in our last video we covered only a couple of them true and we would like to start with the bog so with the bog? martin yeah okay what, what do you think of the bog yes yeah, thanks for having me also as a bog is a very, very useful terrain piece, um, especially against very slow armies. I'm thinking of Baratheons or very um, cavalry heavy army. It's, um, it's a very huge and chunky terrain piece, and you can put it in the middle um, to bring one of your units um, into this terrain piece um, to have a big defensive bubble if you like you can combine the bog with a lot of nice stuff you can if you're a free folk player bog is your probably your favorite uh, terrain piece because you can uh, combine the bog with the traps of the uh, trappers and egret and then it's minus three movement and minus three movement is a lot in this game so i think the bog is a very useful terrain piece but as we said in our last video be careful where you put it, so the bog works on you too. So you can harm yourself with the bog if it's not correctly placed. So Daniel, what is your favorite big non-destructible terrain piece? Yeah, I would um, maybe add some little thing to the bog if it's okay, because um, one frequently asked question is always like, oh, does the bog affect the shift for shooting, oh. for example? Because you have the two inch uh, shift that is commonly uh, like frequently asked. And yeah. yes, it does. So mm -hmm. it even limits the range of range units a little bit. And um, also some uh, connection to game modes. If you play this terrain piece in Dance with Dragons, 
where your movement is reduced to two inch anyway, if you um, if you pick up uh, and drag an egg an objective, then this even adds to it, and you can pretty much lock down a unit completely if you want to. So um, it's a very interesting terrain piece and um, a little bit more of the advanced side of, of playing, so to speak. So um, yeah, and another in a similar fashion, interesting uh, terrain piece is the forest or the wood, um, which is also falls into the category of a defensive terrain piece. What it does is um, it gives plus one armor basically, and it limits um, line of sight for the units outside of the of the wood. So what you can do there is you can really create a defensive parameter, um, especially if you have other abilities um, that add up on armor. Uh, thinking of something like defensive formation with the, from Donald Noy, uh, you have, I don't know, a unit that is on four plus, and now if you get charged, you are suddenly on two plus, which is really, really good. Um, what you can do for it uh, with it is hiding solo units within the forest or the wood. That is a nice tactic. And I think um, that was also your idea, Martin, during our last video um, for, for placing placing the forest or the wood, right? Yeah, I wanted to protect one of my wolves behind the forest um, for being safe of the Lannister crossbowmen. And the wolves, are they love the wood because they have a small base and they can hide pretty easily behind this wall, um, this big piece of terrain. Um, in a perfect world, on an objective, scoring five points for me. And it's very tough for you to go there and kill such a dog, because if you come there, he can run away pretty easy. Yeah, and also like the, the wood and the forest, we, we especially measured for you guys, is the <laughs> yes, biggest is. terrain piece, the biggest yeah. terrain piece of them all. and. Um, by a little margin, but it is. And if you sometimes you want to just block area from other terrain pieces, right? Because you have to keep six inches between terrain pieces, and um, the the forest and the wood does the, exactly this for you very well. So yeah, yeah, blocking okay. is a, is a good uh, hint. In our last video, I put the werewolf tree in the middle. Uh, yeah. Without measuring, I thought the werewolf tree was the biggest terrain, and that was my idea. Uh, it helps my army with moral and it blocks uh, a lot of space from other terrains I don't like. Um, let's say woods or um, wherever trees. And if you are new to the game and you don't want to harm yourself, that was uh, my point in the last video, then just put the wherever tree in the middle to, to block a lot of space and this plus one to morale as a little bonus, but it's more important for you. Don't arm yourself. Just try to get comfortable with, with tempo plays, with activations, with triggers, and terrain can be done a little bit later. So my advice would be again for new players, if you have basically no strategy based on terrain and you're playing against an experienced uh, opponent, just put the wherever tree somewhere in the middle or left or right to block space from other terrain. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a good point, right? The mental load in this game yeah. for beginners can be can be a lot. Mm. And if you can some somehow do something to reduce the load um, by at the same time not doing a mistake, then it's a good thing, yeah. Okay, yeah, what I really like, so, sorry, sorry yeah. what, 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 what I really like was that you mentioned that with the shift, right? Reduce The reduced movement is, like in so many tournaments, we have this coming up. Is a shift movement? Is you know, is is it reduced? Is it not? So it's really good to hear that um, you know that it that this terrain piece does affect range shifts or whatever, or shifts from whatever, yeah. right? It does also like, affect like let's say what is it, hunter's insight, a three shift somehow when you're in long range, it's effect. So it's just a two, yeah. right? It's just about the shift. But yeah. you can say that a shift in general is a movement, correct? Yes. Yes. So it's not, but but the terrain yeah. piece still affects it. Yeah, yeah. It's like the, okay. the difference is between shift as a movement and um, maneuver as an action. Basically, you have to, shift is not an action, but it's a movement or yeah. A move. Yeah. Yeah, so, as I made it clear in the last FAQ, I think. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's good to hear. Second question I had was on forest. That thing about hiding solos in there, um, 
I totally get that with the wolves. What are other, you know, use cases of using this terrain piece on a solo? I think Mac the Mighty might be a thing, right? Um, Mac is not is afraid it... of anything, you know? <laughs> I, I know, I know. But it's still, still, if you have this wood right down the middle and you yeah. can hide him yeah, yeah, for, for quite a while, it's, and, it's then he, and, yeah, it's, and, and then he goes off, right? That's uh, yeah. different than, you know, for not sure. having the forest, right? So, for sure, uh, for sure. Yeah. Are there other use cases except from Mag and hiding a wolf and scoring? I could think of like dragons as typical play. Yeah. Like I play a lot of good, uh, um, a lot of times against good Targaryen players. And um, based, yeah, if you want to avoid range, like go with it. Yeah. Is it, is it also, I, I know we discuss solos, but is it also a thing for, I'm talking Bolton, Bowman and Stark Bowman? I know line of oh, sight okay. in this game is, a little bit weird, right? It it, it says yeah. it blocks line of sight. Like most of the time, there is you know one little line between stuff that you can still see. But is it still a thing when if you would play Stark Bowman or Bolton Bowman, would you would you consider using it? Yeah, of course. It's it's a good thing for both because they are ignoring line of sight. But as you already said, line of sight is basically. 99% of the time, no problem for a range unit. But for those uh, two units, it could be a thing mm. um, to buff them a little bit because for six points, they are pretty weak. But with the forest, uh, and they shoot over the forest, and the other uh, unit can't harm them. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. Yeah, I will try this. It's um, rather for range duels, though, because like if you sure. have your... Stark Bowman with sad six plus armor um, running in the open, like they are, they are easy prey basically. So you also always should consider what we um, said in the last video, maybe just placing a palisade, um, which blocks line of sight too, yeah. to, to, to just um, get them safe from charges. True, true. Yeah, the last thing I can think of what I, what, what I did recently was the Dragonstone Noble, right? Yeah. With his two armor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So when he's in there, um, you know, it's just a uh, yeah, it's just it's it, it's just great, right? And he's now ignoring with ignoring sundering basically, yeah. basic is ignoring sundering basically, and and uh, e right e even even if there is anything that could harm him, um, and like with his new ability of shutting down token play in long range, if you place the tr if you place the four as well, and you just put him in there, right? It's just like a little buff machine, right? In long range around. For, for your Baratheon, so that's another use case I could think of. Yeah, but you have to remember you only uh, get plus one armor against the charge in later rounds. Uh, units with Sundering could harm Yeah, him. sure, yeah. but but still, right? Like, like, yeah. like, it's the, you know, that thing has only three wounds and, and like, yeah. And I think he's a solo rider, right? So he could um, he also, yeah. like, get out of the situation really Exactly, easy. yeah. So, quite good. Okay. So okay, so we covered... Yeah, we we covered um, the corpse pile. Um, or, or the corpse pile is still to cover. Yes, yeah. we cover the rearward tree, we cover the box, we cover the wood, yes. and then we have all the non-destructible terrains. Exactly. So, the corpse pile. Martin, corpse pile. My favorite one. Uh, I don't like corpse piles. Aww. I see why they're useful, but I'm more <laughs> of a buff guy, and corpse piles are going to harm my units, and I don't like them. I basically never place them, but they are good. Uh, just look into our last video. Daniel placed the corpse pile um, to be a little bit safer um, before my tuddy nights. That was the reason why I changed sides. I see why you're placing corpse pile. Places uh, corpse piles are very very good for Lannisters and Boltons, but it's not my type of terrain. But I see why it's useful. And one small thing there, like. Um... If you have, for example, with Three Frog, like a lot of small attacks that yeah. won't do like much damage from um, their normal attack dice, but it will trigger a lot of panic mm. tests that can really um, bring the effect, the overall effect over a game up. So um, that's also something to consider that you maybe want to place uh, a corpse pile just if you have like a lot of small attacks. Yeah. Well, I, I have to say, it was a little bit ironic. My the corpse pile used to be one of my most favorite um, um, terrain pieces until they changed the Night's Watch, 
right? Um, <laughs> be, be, right? Be, 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 before I actually, when, when, when I talk about, like, sorry for, you know, jumping back to my main, but um, when I talk with people, right, how, how strong Night's Watch is and stuff, one key element of that faction, why they were so strong for me was you could put down whatever terrain piece and they would benefit from it, right? There's yeah, basically not, none, none, none of the terrain pieces were bad for, for when I played Night's Watch. So now, with you, you, you lose the vowels. Now the core spell is not that good, right? But, um, mm. but it used to be one of my most, most favorite because like normally it didn't harm re me really, but it harmed my opponent badly. So, um, yeah, yeah, you move to normal uh, moral stat, but yeah. they move to worse or, or yeah, under average still, merchant. Yeah. Exactly, and you still didn't lose the vows, and you had yeah. three rolls in your deck, right? If, 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 so, yeah. So, but yeah, those those times are past. So, let's times not. Are over. Yeah, yeah, let's not talk about it. Then I get you know. Yeah. Okay, so, so file. yeah now. Uh, yeah, cows. I think cows is covered, right? It's it's a it's it's good if you want to play into, uh, into this panic. kind of moral or panic play. Stannis you can use it defensively. Stannis you can side. Use yeah. Stannis side, whatever. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. every kind of army that uh, wants to do this. It hurts you too, right? So there are, could be an argument made that, for example, it's not the best um, terrain piece for Lannisters because they also have bad mm -hmm. morale, right? Yeah, yeah, I see a lot of Bolton advanced too. Lannister players instead picking rear trees and so on. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it's it's a very good piece, and for example, if you play against a double Tali Kev army, which is very popular at the moment, like this can make a huge difference whether you have a corpse pile in the middle or a rear tree. So yeah, don't hesitate to to place it. One final question I would have on uh, like let's say bigger or non-destructible terrain pieces is, um, I would say, eighty-five percent of the time, when someone starts out uh, putting out terrain pieces. 85% of the time, or 90, 95, they put it in the middle, right? Which is totally understandable. Um, but is there a case in what you could think of where you don't do it? Where you do not put your first one, if you choose a big one, in the middle? Or is it always the middle? And talk in any game mode, any faction, any setup, is it always the middle? Yeah, I would think it's always the middle because the advantage of putting one big terrain piece I like basically in the middle. And then we are back to <clears throat> blocking space for the other guy. Maybe there's this corner case, but mm. uh, I think the disadvantage of not doing this is bigger then the advantage of let's say we play dance with dragons and i put a uh, bog left or right i think it's it's correct one of the few things like like playing three ncus i think it's correct to put one thing into the middle um because you don't want to give your opponent this big advantage Choice. if you have already won the role mm. yeah there, there could be there could be a corner case but daniel what do you think like in general if you have armies that are prone to flank like, like they, they want to flank you i mean mm -hmm. right um, and you really want the flanks covered for example with box you could end up like saving like go for the middle i don't care if, because the middle i can um, cover with with my units well or whatever but i it's very important not to get flanked then you could think of like placing and starting uh, yeah no, i mean you you, you ask for for non-destructible so you could oh, yeah. start yeah. by placing uh placing a bog in one flank then you know uh -huh, opponent will go for the middle with, with whatever mm -hmm. and yet then you get a bug on the another the flank too. and yeah yeah okay so that could be could be that a thing but thing. yeah okay. doesn't doesn't occur often for sure okay okay got it and good for everyone out there right i mean the veterans do it so put it in the middle right all right so destructible terrain pieces smaller terrain pieces Right, all of them small, so yep. um, you have to position them. I would say more carefully. Can we say that you have to you have to be more precise on where to put it? Um, yeah, yeah. So what's what's the first one we we uh, take off with? 
Yeah, I would like to start with the low or the destructive, the ruined wall, the because ruined I think wall. it's a, they are the low wall or yep. the ruined wall, but it's the same. So let's say low wall, because I think it's a very underestimated um, terrain piece. You get yeah. plus one armor if you stay behind and you get charged, and uh, the attacker has no rerolls. And let's think of our good old friends, Lannister Guardsmen, behind a low wall on a nice objective. They have two plus armor. You don't have rerolls, and after the attack, then comes Lannister Supremacy. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a very, very underrated defensive piece, even for your, your let's say, your Wardens or your Sword Swords or Lannister Guardsmen, those guys who run up on one flank, grab the objective, and stay there, and just need a little bit protection, but you don't have the point to give them a defensive attachment. Just put a low wall there, and bring those guys behind this wall and uh, your opponent will think twice if he likes to charge them or not. Uh, I think uh, I want to do a commercial for the low wall here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's need to be placed more often, even if it has this downside, yeah, you can destroy it. But it's a very, very good terrain piece that can win the game for you or bring hard times to your opponent. This is not a paid promotion, guys. <laughs> I'm not paid by the low wall. <laughs> <laughs> by the low wall. Simon did not reach out and give us like a little, hey guys, you need to advertise the low wall, man. A couple okay. of low walls. Yeah. yeah. We need more more low walls in the game. <laughs> no, but it's it's, it's really yeah. it's a it's a great terrain piece for sure. Um yeah. and it, it's like it's an alternative to the uh, more blocking kind of linear terrain, um, which really locks down uh, one side of the board and the wall lets you attack, lets uh, you move over it, but you still have a defensive parameter, which is really strong if you cover it with you know, like your unit. So in general, like the linear terrain is a little bit more advanced because you can interact with it and you have to be, um, it's not just, not just are you in or out the terrain. It's also like um, you can do a lot with charge blocking when we talk about palisades and stakes yeah. and you have to be very careful of your positioning with them like a little bit more um in, in regards to the other um non-destructible terrain so and the terrain piece which um yeah incorporates uh, like like which is um, um the best example for this is the palisade and the palisade just say you cannot yeah you cannot move there, it's impassable terrain, right? Um, you can pivot over it, but you cannot move over it, um, which is really important in certain cases. And it's um, it's a great terrain piece to just completely block an area, for example, if you want to cover it with um, your ranged units behind it. Mm. Or you have to really protect the squishy unit from, I don't know, calf charge or whatever. And in general, you can say it's very good against slow armies, which need a long time to just get there and remove it, or against armies with like which are not attack efficient in the way that they don't have like free attacks right because you really drain their resources because they have maybe to turn uh, to, to use like a complete activation just to remove the obstacle to come at you mm. so against baratheons for example it's really really good um they have to sacrifice valuable actions or even activations to do that yeah um yeah on, on on palisades, you already mentioned the the pivot thing. That's always a thing in in tournaments and in you know and in local game stores, wherever it's always you know m moving through, pivot over, whatever. So that's clear. Um, a use case that how I use palisades is when I play, let's say let's say high aggressive armies, or he has like a Targaryen list. I want to make the the battlefield slimmer or mm -hmm. smaller. So he can get around. So he needs to, right? Night's Watch again. He needs to attack yep. my spearmen, my vats. My he needs to go in this funnel, yep. right? So that's yep. why I put palisades down. So you can also use it in terms of, um, yeah, making your own army more efficient, so that you cannot be flanked out or something. That's how sure. I use it a lot of times. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Just to to elaborate on this, you could also one thing that. Um, uh, a good friend of mine showed me once and I, I, th I thought this was really cool and um, I use it since then. It's like if you use a palisade, which you mm -hmm. cannot put onto an objective, right? Mm -hmm. you, you cannot yeah. place it onto this, just, it. just in the middle, next to the middle um, objective square. And so that you completely split the table in two halves. 
And if you have a small foot army with a small footprint of three or four units, you simply can pretty much play in one half of the game, uh, of the gaming table. Yeah, uh, and the battle yeah, map, you yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is this is an also an interesting strategy. So um, like this, yeah. right next to it, and yes. here's the here's the yeah. objective, and then you yeah. play only on on this side. On the side, yeah, on yeah. This side. Exactly. yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, one one other thing I see a lot is, um, yeah, coming back to whatever Golden Company crossbowmen, Lannister crossbowmen, uh, long range sundering units or long range units in general. You put it also down like uh, what is it um, vertically, right? So like this, and they go right behind it and they shift back and forth to shoot, and they're basically unchargeable through this, um, right? So, but what I saw in the past also is sometimes people do not place it in the right way or they do not move in the right way to this um, terrain piece. And if your opponent is a little bit more experienced, he will just, you know, go, go, go away from, from the palisade and, and basically n uh, never, never goes into this bubble of, sure. right? Of, so, so. What's your take on this? On this um, long range behind a vertical palisade, or would yeah, you problem. use maybe uh, uh, yeah. stakes? Right? Is it like what is it? Right? Yeah, the problem when you put it here and the crossbow men are here and the other unit is here, you can easily destroy it. Uh, I would say so. Yeah, yeah you, you can... go there first, right? I mean, this defense, the defending unit needs to go there first, destroy it, and needs to charge through it. So that's basically moving there. Destroying it, that's two, and then charge, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it, it depends on so, the, the, the situation, I would say, but it's doable. Yeah. Mm. But I think, like, the question was um, what do you do if your opponent simply, yeah, lets you be there and go somewhere else, right? What do you do then? Yeah, well, the question is what's the perfect uh what's the what's the operational procedure the perfect mm -hmm. one to 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 do it right i mean because i the, the question basically is i seen a lot of people doing it wrong because in mm -hmm. the end they ended up after be behind this terrain piece and tried to shift back and forth but it wasn't possible so they couldn't really threat anything because mm -hmm. the positioning yeah. wasn't wasn't well oh, so okay, that's okay. the question basically the question is how to use it properly yeah, I mean, there's several answers to this. You could also like, if, if here's a palisade, right here, yeah. um, your unit could be like this so that you can shift this way and charge yeah, block with, and forth, with yeah. a flank um, table edge and so on. You, you can um, do it in, in, in several ways. One general rule would be always be in one inch of the terrain piece you are defending because then you can destroy it with, with swords like beginning of the round mm -hmm. um, so that you can then um maneuver somewhere else right okay. um that's yeah. also like always important if you interact with linear terrain check whether you're in, within one inch or not yeah all right on palisades yeah. do the palisades, stakes come yeah. next yeah yeah just just one um little little note on this um what you can do with it also is like um outflanking is not a it's not a big theme right but what is a the problem is um, a unit that was revived by Baal on NCU and comes back to charge you in the rear or whatever, right? And you could also use palisades <clears throat> on the flanks to a little bit manipulate where the unit can go or not go. So this is more for like advanced play against Greyjoys. You can also use this um, and place it, for example, on one side and then you go to this side and you know, okay, there I have a little zone where I definitely uh, yeah, where my opponent definitely cannot place his uh, revived Balon unit. And the other thing is, if you are more maneuverable than your opponent, the Palisade is good for you, um, and you should consider it. Like, mm -hmm. with Free Folk, Palisades are kind of good, because you can play around it, you can use it way more flexible than your opponent can, yeah. just as a, a general rule for the Palisade. Stakes would be next. All right, then on to stakes. Or actually, one thing, one thing on this outflank thing. I do outflank way, way more often than you would expect, Daniel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's just a mind game for me, actually. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm not using it like, like this. What I, I think when, when beginners read outflank, they think it will happen that this thing 
you know, g goes down and there will be a rear charge or a flank charge. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm actually not, not thinking about this, right? Because mm -hmm. the guys I play, they just react to it to a certain way. So I normally do not like in, in, in a way distant, put them up there in the upright corner and I'm playing to the left. A lot of times I just bring it on the middle mm -hmm. or just to, you know, br bring it in a, in a really threatening position, but without threatening myself. But it's still a mind game because my opponent does not know. He does not know for sure if I bring it there, but I totally get your point. Your point is you have an activation um, uh, disadvantage, right? That's one, that's one big thing, which, yeah. which is, yeah, which is true. It, it for me it, it a lot of times it comes down can i be first player can i be first player then it's right when 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 you are sure you can bring it in round 2 then i i have a tendency to outflank but um go, going back to what you said on balon right um would you then say if balon obviously is a big threat in the current meta so would you say I would put like even two palisades on one side, basically like blocking this whole this whole area, they or would you say I put down? Yeah, so two right. So 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 like the where's my video? Here, <laughs> here, and there, basically, right? So um, okay, that's what you would do. You you, okay. you could do this. I mean, you you, you give could. up like all the terrain, other terrain on the on the yes. battlefield, right? So maybe one is the sweet spot, um, but yeah, you could do that for sure. Mm. And then just keep it this side and uh, leave the other one open. And I mean, mm. he can always come at his deployment zone, right? Or 12 inches from his deployment zone. Yes. Uh, yeah. Like from yeah, his um, that too. baseline. Yeah, like, like Endless Horde, yeah. Like Endless Horde, yeah. basically. Yes. But yeah, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a way to, to a little bit minimalize the effect. So that's good. Yeah, okay. Great hint. So stakes, let's go. Yeah, stakes are similar to uh, Palisades. Um, they are also good against slow armies and uh, non-attack efficiency armies. Uh, you can put them on objectives. That's very important. And that's the difference for Palisades. And uh, you can use stakes for very tricky ways, uh, like charging with giant over it, or with Shaggy Dog and Last Stand, and then Shaggy Dog maybe can kill himself. and. Um, hit you really, really bad. Or what's also a good unit uh, for stakes are Ranger Trackers, because they don't care. Or Rose Knights, or every basically every unit from the Renly sign with the Thornwatch Sentinel, they don't care um, for Palisades either. And to attack a unit on an objective with this Palisade, it's very, very hard. Basically, um, the objective is lost for you or you need to remove the stakes first, and this also takes you time. So stakes are, I would say, one of the higher class uh, or higher skilled um, linear terrain pieces, but you can do a lot with them, but you need to be the right unit. And yeah, as I said, Ranger Trackers are good for them, or the Renly side can use them. Um, and one thing also, don't be so sure about stakes because remember, um, your opponent can run, if he's desperate, he can run or charge through the stakes. And maybe if he's going to kill you and survive it, yeah, then the stakes um, doesn't bring you something. So uh, you need to um, consider when and where to put those stakes. But he would still, I mean, if he would kill you, right? I mean, that's yeah. great, right? And Because you score and... You yeah. don't know the situation, but still, um, this this unit would charge, attack, so they get D three plus one wound, and then they if they kill you, they could search forth what yes. they would want to do, which would be another D three plus one wound, correct? Yeah, but, but what I said from a free for guy, he charged me over the stakes, then brought another unit next to the stakes, and the other unit removed the stakes. So it was also a good a huge play from him. Yeah. Great to be yeah, free for, for, right? Yes. <laughs> you know, for example, like, um, like in general, it's it's right. Also for beginners, like, don't charge onto stakes. It's yeah. because yeah, maybe I roll only two wounds and yeah, so on. Like, yeah. no, 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 it, it's a big mistake. Don't do it. Yeah, but yes, like, never do it. Um, there there are cases. For example, if you have fueled by slaughter, or if you have felt to the crown or whatever, and you can heal up and then move on to. It's like. It's a, it's it's a, something you can have under control, and you shouldn't feel too safe behind the stakes, right? That's what Martin I think wanted to say. True. Don't yeah. feel too safe, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, if you want to feel really safe, use a Palisade. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 Martin, right? You as an old, uh, you know, b b big, big fan of the Rose Knights, right? Yes, yes, yes. All yes. right, so let's talk Rose Knights now. So, Rose Knights, so you mentioned already the Sentinel in there, and so they, right? So, so they have the opportunity to go on the stakes and just sit there. So, three... We, we all know how tough those guys are, right? So what is your take when you are the opponent? Let's say you're the opponent and your opponent does put the Rose Knights on a stakes with a Sentinel. How do you play against him? It's tough to answer this in general. It I depends. Know. Yeah. <laughs> it's eight points. Eight points. Um, it's easier. On... Don't yeah, you yeah. To... You go somewhere yeah. else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, it's go somewhere else. Oh, it's that easy. Yeah, it's they are close to immortal, or you have a way to remove it first. But mm. those Rose Knights are so tough. Yes. With the healing and dealing, it's, it's such a good mechan mechanic. Mm. Um, the perfect spot for Rose Knights if they are on on eight wounds. They can do so many damage, and with plus one minus one, it's so tough. It's, in general, I would say ninety nine point nine percent of the time, okay. just so go away. Give him, give him the five points. Um, he spent it eight points for this. He earns this, this five points. It's, it's too risky, mm. and the Rose Knights are in heavy favor of winning this. Okay, got it. And like the idea basically was also like if you don't have a Sentinel, um, your opponent can uh, mitigate the effect of the Rose Knight if he's, if he's not attacking back, right? But if you do wounds to yourself from stakes, he cannot. That's basically. Um, something mm. your opponent can do with it yeah um okay so we have one very important terrain piece left which is the hedge there we go <laughs> yeah um the hedge is very um it's basically the best terrain piece if you really want to <laughs> decorate the battlefield and create a very nice and cozy atmosphere <laughs> that's, that's that's what, what i like that's what yeah? i like that yeah okay, okay. you so, you got me at uh, you got me at best terrain piece yeah so basically maybe you are way more creative and uh, then we are but basically we could think of next to no use case for that would be a stronger pick than anything else except yeah. for if you really want to you know block an area and do kind of nothing because i mean it, it, it does block line of sight yeah, but... and and it reduces yeah. movement but yeah it's like little to no effect um mm. and for pretty much every situation there's a better terrain piece out there but it looks nice it's um you don't see it all too often and maybe you can uh, create some yeah some surprise confusion. moment confusion um <laughs> as i said that's that can be uh, yeah value on its own so yeah, i think it's it's useful for wolves and the shadow cat and the wolf pack because they are small you can hide them behind and they're not harmed so much when they move through with a plus uh, with a minus one to move them. but in general if you want to have uh minus movement on the opponent just take a block if you want to have a huge loss blocker just take the wood and also the hedge could be destroyed but um i see a lot of terrains um playing with this battlefield layers and then those battlefield layers um hedges are uh, I think they are pretty often used, or more often like like the good terrain, uh, the good or the better terrains, like werewolf trees. So um, you need to think of ideas of dealing with those hedges. They can be useful, but I think when it comes to value and terrain, the hedges have the lowest value of all the eight terrain pieces. But that's something the, for the for the for the comments, guys. Like if you ever used a hedge in a sensible manner successfully yeah please tell us about it <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true. please please do so yeah yeah so yeah, yeah do, do we have some ideas to make the hedge better i think it really comes down to this line of sight thing if like if line of sight would be a bigger thing in this game yeah it might it could be a thing right when you can play compare a song to any other I mean, there is no real comparison, right, to, to any, uh, not, not really, but if you compare it to war games where line of sight and height and everything does play a critical role to play in this game, in song, it does not really make, you know, 
do anything. So I'm totally with you that this line of sight is not really a thing in this game in, in general. And uh, reducing speed, you know, what <laughs> if you would really want to do this there's the bog right you do not yeah. need the hedge so maybe the hedge needed to reduce the speed by two then it would be useful yes yeah it, yes. it needs something something yeah um, an extra an it. extra buff yeah. and to make it more unique so and now it is a combi a small and bad combination of a forest and a bog true true yeah but as we said um guys you know drop it down we do not know everything so I'm. I, I would be really interested to hear your thought uh, thoughts on the hatch, but also on this format we do. So if you have any comments, if you have any, you know, any any feedback, everything is valuable. Everything is like hi highly anticipated by all of us. So please share it in the comments down below. Join us on the Discord and talk to 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 us like directly. We we are always open to you know to jump on a on a on a on a voice channel or or chat with you. So um, yeah. So there's one thing I want to highlight. We launched a, a Patreon sites. So we have Patreon, we have Kofi, and we have Buy Me a Coffee. So if you like this content, if you are maybe on the Discord and uh, already and you see what we do. Uh, please uh, consider to to support us and to support the channel to to see more content like this. We are like increasing every week on setup on the uh, on on the on the equipment we have we have. I hope this is uh, uh, visible to all of you. So if you uh, consider doing this, this would be highly appreciated. Thank you in advance. Um, and we also might end this video with um, yeah with the announcement that you know just just um, reached out so so maybe you guys wondered in the last weeks why Daniel and uh, Martin are here in some videos so basically we were cooking this um, in our pot of you know song uh, in the last in the last weeks and now it's out there right we so we built a team and uh, just uh, just before I give the word to to, to you two um, the, the 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 general idea on this team is um, to yeah, to just to just um, make this organized play and competitive scene really a thing. We want to invite all of you to organize yourselves, to build teams, play competitively in tournaments, and also play play maybe not only in your local area. Come to bigger tournaments. Go. We are going to Poland like in a few weeks, and um, yeah, organize yourselves. Reach out to us. We are happy to build anything with you. Support on how to do it. So. That's the general idea of this team, and I'm more more than happy that you know we have two two veterans like 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 Iceman and Larks on the team, but also we have like high prospects, really good players out there. Just to mention a few, we have Dominic, which is an outstanding Greyjoy player, and um, Alex uh, Xatanos, who's like a really big prospect of us, where we really want to see where he's going in like a year because he's not playing that long. Uh, so let's see where he goes, but he's really good right now already. So um, yeah, that's the that's uh, the thing. So on YouTube, maybe you can leave one or two sentences on the team. What did what does it mean for you, and where do you want to go with this team? Yeah, maybe I can start. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I'm I'm so happy to be a part of the team to contribute with my experience that I have, also with my connections to like other teams. Um, that is, I mean. Yeah, we want to encourage people to to really think of themselves as a team that incorporate a certain identity and um, yeah contribute um, to to the whole song scene, um, which also benefits from from people organizing and especially internationally. So yeah, I'm 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 pretty pretty hyped actually, and um, I'm glad that now the thing is out and we can talk about yeah. it and yeah. um, really dive into it. Um, yeah, that's that's it. I'm pretty pretty also thrilled to go to Poland and yeah. um, meet Team Pivnica, another team, which mm. um, will be a hard challenge to face, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think to build a team is the next logical step. <clears throat> um, when I get asked uh, about tournaments and stuff, I said, um, I or in this case we. We are on the top, but there's no top without the bottom. 
and we want to help with this team um, to get to give something back to the community by um, going to other tournaments, be there as a team, uh, be ambassadors for the game. And the most important thing for this team to be a member is not to be a good or a, a, a better than average player than, a, than to be uh, a good human being at the table and to have fun with other guys. And I'm very honored and thankful to be a part of this team. And hopefully we can win some more guys for our team uh, in the future. That would be nice. Yeah, you can, you know, you can always reach out. You have to play uh, 25 games against Martin uh, in a row and win each and every, and then you will be part of the team. No, no I'm just joking, right? So uh, as Martin said, we built this team not on, we need only like like high-end players that will always win. So as I said, we, we also gather players where we know those guys, the first thing we, we talked about was the first thing, or the first box we need to tick is we are all supportive of the game. We are supportive for the community. We, we, we create content as you see it right now. So we want to, you know, just make the, the game better, the community better, and want to bring this awesome game to a lot of people out there. So that's the main reason. And if you live that, and if you want to be part of it, just reach out to all of us and just have a talk with us. So we're happy it's out there. So uh, the, the, the next thing will be in Poland. So it will be Larks. Uh, this one, Larks. Uh, it will be myself. It will be Dominic, Tipsy Tengu, and it will be Alex Xatanos. This four team, this uh, four 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 guy team to compete there with Chess Clock. So um, <clears throat> yeah, let's see how that goes, right? So um, yeah, I think there's nothing more to say than until we meet again. Roll. Zos. Quits. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.